In lecture three of module one, we'll be looking at a couple of the conventional techniques that we use for evaluating P release from soils. But of course, the first thing we need to do is to bring the soils from the field to the lab, which we discussed in a previous lecture. The two conventional techniques we are looking at will be water soluble P and the soil test P. The question is, why is water soluble P an important parameter in P related issues? Well, water soluble P represents the P that is most easily releasable when in contact with water, whether it be rain or irrigation. The second question we'll be addressing is, how is water soluble P determined? We will also look into the importance of water soluble P procedure for evaluation of P losses from a soil and how water soluble P is determined not only for upland soils, but also for wetland soils. And finally, we will look into water soluble P and what it tells us with the varying P sources. Let us now move into the extraction procedure for water soluble P. Very often you would also hear it as water extractable P. First of all, what we do is to take two grams of a soil in a centrifuge tubes. You, so you weigh two grams into a centrifuge tubes, as you can see in the diagram to the left. Then add 20 ml of deionized water or double deionized water and shake for an hour on a shaker. If the shaker is shown to the right of the slide and uh, the little vials, the, the centrifuge tubes can be tilted so that you get an end-to-end -end shaking of the uh, water soluble P um, with the soil and the water. <clears throat> then we allow the solution or the suspension to settle for an hour and finally filter through a 0.45 micron filter. Then the analysis would be done on the extractant and we will deal with the instrumental analysis a little bit later. The figure or the folder to the top um, right shows the filtration use units generally used for the filtration and the, fil the diagram to the bottom, bottom right just shows how you place the, filter, the filter paper into a filtration unit. So it is the, this particular unit that you can see in the other photograph, you'll see it attached to the filtration unit. Now, the extraction ratio effects on water soluble P. One thing we need to remember is the soil solution ratio during extractions will affect the water soluble P. Wide ratios, example, a 1 to 100 ratio, that is 1 um, gram of soil to 100 ml of the deionized water or the ratio or any other weight and volume to maintain that particular ratio appear preferable to characterize speed loss by a runoff. A narrower soil to solution ratio, say 5 to 1, is preferable for evaluating P losses by a leaching. The water soluble P values will increase with the extraction ratio. Now this is obvious because you have more water and you have the same amount of soil and in particularly in very heavy P impacted soils, the greater the extraction ratio, the more P will be extracted. At the same time, if we repeatedly extract uh, a soil which has a lower soil or a narrower soil to solution ratio repeatedly, you will find that more P will essentially be repeat, will be uh, continuously removed. The ratio used for most of the analysis in the soil and water science department labs is 1 is to 10. 
Now, most of what went above, or what we have discussed so far, is for upland soils. For wetland soils, a 1 to 10 ratio can sometimes be prom problematic since it would be difficult to obtain sufficient solution for analysis. And <clears throat> the last thing that we need to know about the extraction ratio is using the same ratio for different pea sources may not always provide needed information for assessing pea release from a soil. And you will see the, some of these reasons uh, in subsequent lectures. The second of the, um, the, the conventional technique we are looking at is soil testing for phosphorus. What are the basic components of a soil test? First of all, soil sampling. We have discussed in module one, lecture two. The handling and the preparation of the soil is similar to the details for water-soluble P determination. And now we look into the actual soil sampling analysis of the soil testing for phosphorus. Now, we use soil testing for two purposes, for agronomic purposes and for environmental purposes. For agronomic purpose, the chemically, or to, the reason we use for agronomic purposes is to chemically extract the amount of nutrient from the soil that is proportional to that which be available to the crop during the growing season. For environmental purposes, to evaluate the likelihood of an environmental problem from a nutrient, such as pea, that would impact the quality of water leaving a field. So now we have two types of an, um, two, two reasons for soil testing for agronomic purposes and for environmental purposes. And you know, for agronomic purposes, as we had mentioned before, the usual amount of soil that you take will be the surface soil, say up to 15 centimeter depth that translates to about six inches of soil. And for environmental purposes, depending on what you're looking at, your purpose, the depth um, to which you remove the soil will be based on the objectives of the particular research project. <clears throat> Here are some of the common extractants for soil testing of pea. Bray 1, Bray 2, Malik 1, Malik 3, Olson. You will notice that the extraction, extract composition is very different for all these extractants and the choice is dependent on the soil type. So I'll not go into the details of the extract composition. Uh, these are just to give you some examples of the common extractants for soil testing of pea. Now, how, what is the reason for the choice of an extractant? As I just mentioned a little bit earlier, soil testing procedures were initially used for agronomic purposes, that is, crop responses to applied P. The extractant selected is based on its suitability for a given type of soil. Acid soil, iron and aluminum are the major components for retaining P, um, plant available P, and in calcareous soils, calcium is often responsible for retaining the plant available P. A soil extractant is generally recommended for a given location. As again, as I've mentioned earlier, in Florida, the soil test extractant was Malik 1 for iron and aluminum based soils till um, about six, about a year and a half ago or something like that. But we have now changed to Malik 3, uh, which is actually uh, useful for a wider range of pH of soils. And th therefore, Malik 3 is recommended as a better or a good alternative to Malik 1. However, several other states continue to use Malik 1, of which Georgia is a good example. 
So move on to the extraction procedure for malic 1P. So you prepare a malic 1 extracting solution containing 0.05 uh, molar hydrochloric acid plus a 0.0125 molar sulfuric acid. This solution should be prepared under a fume hood as concentrated acids are very dangerous. Weigh 5 grams of soil into a centrifuge tube. Add 20 ml of the malic 1 solution. Shake the solution for 5 minutes. Filter through a Wattman 41 filter paper. The filtrate is now ready for analysis of P and any other parameters needed in the malic 1 extract. Now, the extraction procedure for malic 3B. We prepare a malic 3 extracting solution containing ammonium nitrate, ammonium fluoride, acetic acid, nitric acid, and EDTA. That is EDTA is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. Weigh 0.5 grams of a soil into a centrifuge tube at 25 ml of the malic 3 solution, shake for 5 minutes, filter through Wattman number 41 or an equivalent pore size filter paper. The filtrate is now ready for analysis of P and any other parameters needed. See, the reason I keep saying any other parameters needed is that when it's a soil test, you need other parameters in the soil, including nitrogen, potassium, copper, zinc, the micronutrients, the major and the micronutrients. Question then is, how do we determine the phosphorus? Remember, we have now extracted the phosphorus. We have phosphorus in solution. But yet, we still need to determine the amount of phosphorus in solution. There are actually two procedures you could use. One is use a spectrophotometer at 880 nanometers wavelength, which is called a colorimetric procedure. And the second is the use of inductively coupled plasma spectroscopy, or ICP. Now, ICP is what is normally used in many of our soil testing laboratories, whereas a spectrophotometer is often used in research labs. Now, let us see, what is the difference between measurement by ICP and colorimetric procedure? See, the results of P-analysis by the two procedures are not directly comparable. ICP measures total P in solution. Colorimetric procedure measures inorganic P. So what do you... What do we do next? So if you need organic P, it is simply a difference between the ICP and the colorimetric P procedure. For routine soil P tests, ICP is recommended. As it's obvious, it is offered by public and commercial labs and therefore accessible to the public. ICP P is used while developing procedures for P risk assessment of soils. Again, for the same reason, ICPP is what is easily available to the public. Here we now provide a whole range of references that I have referred to earlier. I do not have to go into detail of all these references, but of course they are all available easily and especially within our in the University of Florida Library and elsewhere. And uh, these references will become very useful for those who need to know more details on the various techniques we use, not only for water extractable P and of course the soil test P, and not only for just malic 1 and malic 3, but uh, several of the other soil test procedures. With that, as this lecture.